question about uh, leaf spine uh, equal cost multipath architecture. Would you recommend multi vendor or single vendor? And then would you mix it up at the leaf, uh, the spine, or both? And then a routing protocol choice, OSPF V3 or OSPF plus ISIS. And then where can I get a design guide on how to do this? Well, how many people do you think are writing design guides for multi-vendor leaf spine interoperability? Uh, I don't know about a design guide for that myself. Maybe one of you guys have heard about that. I'll just, um, I yeah, don't know. So Jeremy, you want to take a stab at this? See, this, um, this is loaded with potholes here. <laughs> it, it is. It is. I, I mean, I'd ask why would you bother with multi-vendor because you know, you're probably going to get a better bargain if you buy all your switches from one vendor. Well, I was but thinking cost, but reason. I think you're right, Jeremy. I mean, I, I the only yeah. driver I came up with was cost as well. But uh, but but like or, you say, then or, or eggs in one it. basket. If you if, if you buy it all from you know Arista, let's say they're going to make sure they give you a great deal. So I don't even know if cost is mm -hmm. the driver, but but anyway, I'm sorry, Jeremy, keep going. Now, so so on the multi-vendor side, uh, the, the only kind of inkling of an idea I have here is Abstra. Um, so what Abstra does is they this was their first design, I believe, uh, was a, a, a leaf spine architecture for data centers, and their whole go-to-market strategy is this multi-vendor, you know, pull out the Juniper, put in the Arista, and they'll program it the same way that the uh, the previous vendor was. So uh, if you're looking for a design guide, maybe they have one, but in a way, that's probably their special sauce, so they probably don't publish it, uh, but that might be the place to go. Uh, I think manage, yeah. management complexity would be an issue in multi-vendor. That would be my main issue i mean could be like like with firewalls one vendor does more something better than the other um but do you really need to design for perfection or do you want to design for ease of management and lower complexity yeah the the, the so in theory sure multi-vendor would work because these are all industry standard protocols but when you use multi-vendor solutions, you get the least common denominator in terms of features and functionality. And I, I just, I don't know why you'd sign yourself up for that unless you were forced to through some sort of refresh cycle or, um, you know, some bargain you got on, on certain devices. Well, yeah, One I, thing that I know is done is if you have, I mean, there's, there's leaf spine and there are shops that do massive leaf spine networks with many thousands of, uh, of host ports that are available in that, in that one network okay but then there are other uh, designs where it's leaf spine but it's more pod oriented and then the pods interconnect um and you really have a bunch of little little leaf spines uh, perhaps so maybe there's a case there where a pod is one vendor and a different pod is a different vendor because you stood it up at a time where you're working on the rock bottom price and so you threw a different vendor in there and then going back to Jeremy's point about Abstra, if you guys haven't heard of Abstra and what they do, just work here, they're not a switch vendor, they're a uh, an orchestration tool. They uh, do the uh, programming and then monitoring of the system to make sure that it's, they would say they are intent-based and make sure that your intent has been fulfilled um, along the way. Mm -hmm. And they, they are multi-vendor, just so that we're clear on that. But uh, you know, on the whole, I'm, I'm with everybody else. I don't know why you'd go, I, it's hard to come up with a good reason you'd go multi-vendor. Now, do any of you have an opinion on the routing protocols here? I mean, I, I don't like the choices I've been given, OSPF v3 or OSPF plus ISIS. I don't know if those are design constraints or if those are just what you are familiar with and comfortable with, a uh, person that asked here. But uh, you, you have thoughts on those? Uh, I'm not sure why you would use OSPF and ISIS, they, they solve the same problem, but maybe I'm missing something in the, the use case. Uh, the, the third option and the one that I think Abstra uses in their solution is IBGP, so. Yeah, yes. they do. That Most people use BGP, they don't use OSPF or ISIS. Uh, Russ White has proposed a standard in the IETF to do, uh, to extend ISIS to be fit for purpose in the data center, so it's faster converging and blah, blah, blah. There's very, so lots of good reasons. He's put a lot of good ideas into that, but I don't think, um, typically ISIS has been licensed for extra fees by the, by the vendors, and they're not likely to make their ISIS apps available, and open source implementations of ISIS are pretty limited. So what most people are doing is they're just going down the BGP route. They're quite often using free range, uh, free range routing, FRR. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And they're using that as the app, the BGP app on top of a white box, and that's what everybody's using. So if you look at Cumulus, for example, they published a whole book 
on BGP in the data center. It's a great little book. I think it's actually right here. I've been trying to read it lately. Um, it's a very good book. It's a free book. You can go to Cumulus's website and download a free copy for it or find it on your O'Reilly subscription if you have that. Nobody's using OSPF for EM. Um, I did use OSPF for a ECMP spine with a customer. Problem was is that OSPF doesn't do a good job of load balancing over 16-way. So when you go to a 16-way spine, it starts to have some problems. So BGP is your friend. Thank you.